How's it going YouTube? Jamie the Kid Zero Zero here, coming to you guys with a deck profile of Constellas. Um, I need to be, give a big shout out to my friend James, right at the start of this video for loading me this deck so I could profile it. Um, I do have Constellas myself, but it's not a glorious dual terminal like his copy is. So he loaned me the deck that he took second place at Locals with um, yesterday. Um, it's, this should be uploaded after my tournament diary, so he took second place at the Locals that I played Gear Gear at and took fourth. Um, I really kind of like his list, he put a good bit of thought into it, so I'm just going to profile it. Um, I'm going to give my thoughts on the list, um, he hasn't really given me many of his thoughts on it, actually he hasn't given me any of his thoughts on it, so everything that I say in this list may be a bit misguided, but they're my thoughts and my interpretations of why he's playing these cards. So, without any further ado, I'm going to get into this uh, this lovely deck profile, I really do like this deck in DT, I wish I, wish I had it myself to be honest, I really do. Um, so if I can find a place to put the rest of the extra deck on my desk, because my desk is a bit cluttered with stuff at the moment, let's get into the profile. So we're going to start the profile off with three copies of Constella Kaus. Constella Kaus is your go-to guy in this deck. If you don't know about Constellas, you really... If, if you don't know about this card, you obviously don't know how to play Constellas. This guy, up to twice per turn, can target any one of your Constella monsters and put its effect up by one or down by one. So your most common play will be making this and another Constella monster on the field, level 5, and going into, of course, Constella Pleiades, which is the card that this deck is infamous for. I'm going to do some explaining, because why not, if you like explaining. So, uh, it's then followed up by the card that you will most often see it paired with, three copies of Constella Pollux. Um, Constella Pollux um, is the extra normal summon guy, it gives you a bit more speed to the deck. Um, he's the exact duplicate of um, Evil Swarm... I forgot his name now. <laughs> the, uh, the Evil Swarm uh, extra normal summon guy, I know people are going to comment the name, but don't comment the name. I'll, I know, it's sat right in front of me, but I can't, I can't remember the name right now. Um, Constella Pollux is your guy who, when you summon him, as a condition effect, which is something people don't seem to know, he allows you an extra normal summon if his, nor if his summon resolves. If his normal summon resolves, it sets a condition that says you can have an extra normal summon. What this means is your opponent cannot affect Vela, Fiendish Chain, or anything, to li anything like that to this effect because it isn't considered to activate. It doesn't form a chain. However, if Skill Drain is already face up on the field and you normal summon this monster, its effect will not, tr its, its condition will not be set. He then played, similarly to Constella Pollux, two copies of Constella Algidi. Um, Constella Algidi is similar to Pollux, except when this card is normal summoned, it, allow it activates and allows you to special summon one Constella monster from your hand. So it's worse than Pollux because it is considered to activate, which is why it's played at a lesser number. And it can also be maxied, but it's a card that you want to play to give you more speed to your Chaos plays. We then play three copies of, in my opinion, one of the most powerful monsters in the deck. Uh, three copies of Constella Sombre. And I really wish this card was out in DT, but sadly it wasn't. It came out in uh, Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy. Now this card is really cool. Um, this first, um, its first effect is one that you, I don't think you'll use that often. While this card is in the graveyard, if it was set that this turn you can normal summon a Constella monster for one less tribute. And you almost always never use that effect because we're not using the tribute version of this deck. But its other effect is incredibly relevant, which reads you can banish one Constella monster from your graveyard, then target one Constella monster in your graveyard and add that target to your hand. Also, this card gains the following effect. This turn, you can activate this effect, normal summon one Constella monster. So basically, this card is a one card exceeds that allows you to banish a Constella from your grave, add one to hand, and then immediately normal summon any Constella from your hand, having giving you two Constella monsters, and you can make an exceeds. Best plays... Always, the best play with this card is if you've already made a Pleiades, you can go uh, summon this card in the Pleiades has died, banish the Pleiades from gra uh, from the grave, add the Chaos back to your hand, normal summon that Chaos, and um, proceed to make a new Pleiades. So that's that's your most common play with um, with Sombre. And then for the last two cards, oh, sorry, no, there are there is another monster after this. For the last two Constella monsters, we play two copies of Constella Shertan. Constella Shertan is a card that people go on and off of so so frequently it hurts. And for those of you who don't know Shertan, he is the um, the Stratos of the deck. You normal summon this guy, you search your deck for any Constella. So you'll almost always be searching Sombre uh, mid game, and you'll find yourself searching Chaos or Pollux in the early game situations. This card just gives you a bit more consistency. I'm personally a really big advocate of Shertan, and so is James, but a lot of people have been choosing not to run this card, but I, I really like Shertan. So, Shetan. And then the final monster in the main deck is one copy of Brotherhood of the Fifest Bear, because it, this deck does play tankies for um, the Chaos search. So, Bear is a nice other option to give you immediate removal. So, that is the entire monster lineup.
we're gonna pick these up. We're gonna move these over here. I'm not gonna try and do the do the pile shuffle together like I do with my own cards because I don't want to damage James's. For the spell lineup, he does not play Dark Hole because Dark Hole conflicts with your um, drive to establish field presence with this deck. This deck always wants to have a Pleiades on field. It always wants to have a big monster out on the field. So Book of Moon, sorry, um, Book of Moon, Dark Hole really, really uh, interrupts that uh, that push. For the uh, spell lineup, we play one Book of Moon, Livra de la Luna. Um, I really like this card. Um, it's really, really powerful. As Billy Brake said in one of his videos, I can't remember which one it was, it, this is like a pseudo-effect Veiler. So this card, I just really like this card because it's very, very versatile. You can do so many different things with this. So if you can play it and you've got room in the deck, play it, especially in control-based decks. So one Book of Moon, lovely. CP one that I don't actually own. I need to get a CP Super one. Um, then one Reinforcement of the Army, because Reinforcement is really good for searching out your Pollux's. So, Rota. Uh, then, in continuing with, with the Rota theme, three copies of Tenki. He hasn't managed to pick up ultis yet. He's trying to max rarity this. Um, three copies of Tenki to search out your um, Constella House, if I can get it. And your, const and your Constella. Um, Brotherhood of the Fifers Bear. I keep, I keep joking about uh, He keeps calling this Constella Bear, which uh, keeps put putting me off now. But you search your cows and your bear with the tankies, that's the main reason you play them. Uh, continuing on, we play Triple Lance because you want your monster summons to stick. Bagro is horrible against this deck. You don't want to be committing two cards out of your hand into a Pleiades if your opponent is just going to bottomless trap hole it. Uh, you also want to have this set while you have the Pleiades out because your opponent almost always on Duel Network when I test this deck. Um, if I make Pleiades, my opponent has a Dark Hole. So you want to have the Lance. Uh, and those lances are also accompanied by three copies of Mystical Space Typhoon or Mystischer Realm Typhoon um, because German MSTs are pretty cool. Um, just back row removal. So it rounds off the spell lineup. There's not much else to say on the spells. Pick up that. Uh, for the traps, Double Dust, uh, continue again with the back row removal. You, just, you have to get the back row off the field with this. It gives you a great prophecy matchup actually having all of this back row. Um, and it also gives you a really strong fire matchup. And a Mermail matchup, so it's actually pretty good uh, meta-wise, but it does um, leave a bit to be desired against Gear Gear, because otherwise you have to try and blind space their um, Gear Gear gears when they're set, and that just gets a bit horrible really fast. Um, we then play three copies of Mistake. Uh, Mistake is a very powerful card in decks that can play it. Um, while you may ask, um, hey, why is he playing Triple Mistake when he has all these search cards? Well, may I introduce you yet again to Constella Pleiades. Um, Constella Pleiades lets you bounce stuff. So when you've, um, you of course try and hold Mistake for as long as you can and get off all your searches while you can, but then your Pleiades comes into play. If you have to make a search play, you can bounce this, make your search play, set it, and then stand by phase, activate it again, or hold it near until your opponent dualities or Spellbook of Secrets is, until you can get that plus one. So Mistake is a really, really powerful card in the meta right now. It hurts a lot of different decks, so if you can play it, play it. Uh, moving on, we play three Phoenix Chain. Three, uh, three Phoenix Chain is really nice. Uh, again, in this meta right now, he doesn't main deck Effect Veiler. Um, Phoenix Chain is a better main deck because again, Pleiades bouncing it, you can get you can get it for free. So um, Phoenix Chain is really really strong against all the effect activations in the meta right now. Really good against Gear Gear. Really good against um, some Mermail situations and of course the fire matchup. So Phoenix Chains, uh, double D Prison because D Prison is really nutty against. Um, uh, some fire pokes uh, if they don't have the lance, um, and also the mermail matchup. This card comes into its own. Uh, double mirror force because massive removal is cool. One bottomless, one torrential, and one uh, avertisement divin, which I really actually re I really like this. I really want to get it off him, but uh, the one warning is good. As you can see, he like me doesn't play compulse because compulse is getting really bad this format. Compulse is just not very strong. Uh, so that's the complete main deck. Onto the extra deck. Um, I had to fill in a couple of slots because he didn't have um, Exiton and 101, so, and I really wanted to play them, so I put them in myself. Um, so for the extra deck, we have double Constella Pleiades. Um, I'm personally a really big fan of three. I'm not sure if he was only playing two because he only has two DT ones, but I really like three Pleiades, but two Pleiades is in here. This is the heart and soul of the deck. This is the card you're going to be making all the damn time. Um, for those of you who don't know what it does, it's, it's a monster that's summoned by two level 5 light uh, Exceeds Materials, uh, and once per turn during either player's turn, you can detach one Exceeds Material from this card, target one card on the field, and return it to the owner's hand. So, 
you can see why this card is pretty versatile. It is a walking compulsory evacuation device that can target anything. You can recycle your tankies, your fiendish chains, and he's just he he, put, he pulls off so many shenanigans. It's ridiculous. Uh, then one can sell a precept. Um, this card is really really good against um, uh, Leo, Guardian of the Sacred Tree, which almost all Mermail decks are playing right now. And Mermails are quite inclined to go into Leo against this deck because of Pleiades. The first thing you think of when you play, uh, face Constella is Pleiades. So you think, hey, I'll make Leo, that can't be bounced. So that's where Precept comes into play, because Precept is a card that can, uh, during either player's uh, uh, damage step, it can honest itself for a thousand, so it's pretty damn good. So it can make itself 34 and swing over the uh, the Leo. We didn't play uh, one Constellar Omega, because when you're playing into loads of back row, sometimes Omega is the best shout, just to start getting those free, uh, free pushes in, and you don't have to worry about your opponent's back row unless they double chain. Uh, and then finally, to go with all the Constellar guys, we do play one Constellar M7. Um, you'll almost always only bring this out over uh, a spent Pleiades or a spent Precept or a spent uh, Omega. But it's in there. You can make six. You can have a Chaos out for a turn and boost itself twice. And then next turn, it can boost something else twice because it's not until the end phase. So Ptolemy M7 is is a card that's it's a good choice. Um, then one Star Leech Power Dynamo. This card's really strong. This should be a Constellar. It's two, li two lights. Negate an opponent's uh, negate an opponent's effect and make its attack zero. I think that's what it. I think it negates the effect. Yeah, negate the effect and its attack becomes zero. And then when it dies, you get to draw a card. So he's really really good. Uh, one may stroke. I still don't have my own ulti, I, which makes me really jealous of this. But may stroke's really really good at the moment. So may stroke. Uh, one dweller for the of course mermail matchup and the heretic matchup. The one one on one honor arc. Uh, the one exiton knight, which is stupid good. Uh, the one Direwolf, and then for the other fives, other than the Pleiades, uh, he plays one Volcosaurus, because hey, Volcosaurus Guy Knight is good, if you see my wind-up deck profiles, you've seen me preach about it. One Tyrus, because Tyrus, one Zenmaio, and one Gaia Dragon the Thunder Charger. Um, I've also been supplied with his side deck from the event, so I'm actually going to profile that now as well. Um, this is just his sideboard, it's what he plays, so take that as you will. Uh, Double Veiler, just for various matchups like Gigia and Fire. Triple Max C for the Mermail matchup and the Heratic matchup. Double Fossil Diner. I'm not sure which mer which matchups for, uh, these are for, but I would assume mainly for Heratic. Sometimes for Mermail. Uh, depends on how you're playing it. Uh, the one Thunder King, which I personally like maining, but it's sided in this build. Prophecy. Uh, the one Fissure is his only spell that he sides. The third Dust Tornado for more back row hate. One Soul Drain for... Um, Oh, what's it called? Mermel and um, Heratics. There is no Macrocosmos in this because Macrocosmos uh, conflicts with Constella Sombre because with Fissure, your Exceeds materials are sent to the graveyard, so Sombre can still banish those and, you know, get its effect. Whereas with other Macro, your Exceeds materials are, of course, banished, so the Sombre would have no targets. So you don't want to have that confliction. And also, under Macrocosmos, you can't send Tanky to the graveyard with Bear. It just caused too, it causes too many conflicts, and that's not good. Um, to Mind Crush, he did also comment that he would consider swapping out uh, Mind Crush for a copy of Shared Ride, which I will just dig out now for visual visual aid. He did consider cutting um, the two Mind Crushes for two copies of Shared Ride, but he's cut, they're currently Mind Crushes, so consider Shared Ride if you want to net deck this. But... That's what he was suggesting. He might play a copy of Shed Ride. But Two Mind Crush was strong. And then finally, Double Black Horn of Heaven for um, Hieratic and the Gear Gear matchup. So, yeah, guys, I hope you have enjoyed. Let me know what you think of this profile. There's not really much that I would change um, if I was James. I, I quite like what he's done with this list. And um, I was just really glad to be able to kind of do a profile of all this lovely, lovely uh, DT Constella stuff because I really want to build a DT deck. but... I just never actually gotten around to bringing it all in. Um, I, hope, I hope you guys have enjoyed. I'm planning on bringing you guys quite a few deck profiles over the next few weeks. Um, just as soon as I'm actually able to put them together. So yeah. That's uh, that's been DT Constellas. I've really enjoyed doing this deck profile. Let me know what you guys want to see in the, deck, in the description below. Um, I'm actually going to put my Facebook link uh, down there as well. Because I want you guys to check out my Facebook. Because I've been posting a lot more on that. So if you want to hear the latest about this channel. Please go check out that link down below. And let me know what decks you want to see. I can't do Noble Knights and I can't do Fire Fist. But almost everything else I am slowly but surely trying to build. Check out my Facebook. Check out the posts of what decks I'm building soon. And expect to see uh, Prophecy. 
and Heratic very soon, and then hopefully I'll be bringing you Sylvans and Ghost Tricks uh, within the next couple of weeks. Otherwise, this has been Jamie the Kid Zero Zero. Again, thank you so much, James, for allowing me to profile this, and I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.